Hi, this is Derek with Taylor Whips, and this is a response to a video that Shadowversity posted on July 1st of 2023 about the effectiveness of a whip as a combative weapon. Now, I have been a student of the whip for 10 years now. I started in the summer of 2013, and since that time I have studied various uh, techniques and styles from all around the world including the Australian sport whip cracking style, the rolling loop style as taught by Anthony Delongis, the Ladigo Idaga method as taught by Tom Meadows, the Tibetan wave uh, method as taught by Ron Liu, uh, along with the American sport whip cracking styles, the uh, European whip cracking styles, and I am continually researching and working on all of those things to become a better uh, whip user. The key to using a whip is making that crack happen at a specific point relative to the whip user and the rest of the body of the whip. Being as the whip momentarily exceeds 1,400 feet per second, it can have dramatic and spectacular effects on soda cans, water bottles, uh, glass bottles. It can cut the skin and on and on. Uh, this of course is contingent upon the crack being performed correctly. Let's get into this video about uh, whips. Now, how you crack the whip there is a less effective way to crack the whip because instead of throwing the whip straight at your target, you're pulling the whip back towards yourself, which means that the whip is going to come and potentially hit you instead of the thing that you intend to hit. I feel like this is coming from when you were trying to crack it. Yes. Right on the, right on the bottle, yes. so you were pulling back a little more. Yeah. I noticed when you were cracking the whip that the, the crack was happening in an improper spot and that's why you were wrapping around the whip and throwing it or hitting it very, very hard, but you weren't getting the cutting effect that you were looking for. Cutting the bottle can be done with a greater degree of accuracy when the crack is placed in the proper spot. The whip is only going supersonic for a very, very short time and that happens in a very specific point in its travel. If you're able to put that in the spot that you want it to, you have the greatest degree of using it as an effective cutting tool. If it happens too late, the whip is starting to slow down again. Because the whip is capable of multiplying energy put into it, turning a very small and slow motion of my hand into a very explosive and fast motion at the end of it, actually being about 32 times faster than I am capable of moving, it can have very substantial effects onto a target uh, piece, be that target static or dynamic. Uh, Anthony Delongis in this video, while demonstrating the capacities that the whip has, describes how difficult it is for an opponent to see where the whip is coming from. He mentions how it never has to stop. Here in this clip, uh, the whip was stopped, and then the opponent rushed in. The whip never has to stop moving. Uh, you can do one crack and continue pulling and go back in for a follow-up um, attack. It never has to be one, pause, reset, and one. Uh, that was something that he saw an opening and exploited, which was a very good thing on his part. Um, that, however, doesn't mean that the whip can't do follow-up attacks. Uh, it can to a great degree of effectiveness, uh, especially where you have an opponent who is getting used to your style. You can use that to set a trap, telegraph, and then pull them in for uh, something that they're not expecting. Shown here are two clips, one by Anthony Delange is using a seven foot whip, which is seven feet of braiding and with an additional, uh, they call it fall at the end which gives it uh, about 10 or 11 feet overall. And here is Tom Meadows with a whip that is four feet of braid uh, with an additional fall piece, making it six or seven feet overall. As each video displays, it has the capacity to get to any point very, very quickly. This speed is not simply blind motion, but it is very pinpoint and targeted motion. Here, after you got hit, that partly was because you didn't maintain proper form, but in a realistic situation, form won't be proper.
proper every single time. And there is always a risk of having something come back and hit you. That's the same with any tool. A flexible weapon, as uh, pointed out here, does have a higher chance of that happening. So in this section, the whip is getting caught on the environment. Partly that is the whip that you're using, partly it's how the whip is thrown, partly it is a weak point of the whip. It requires a large amount of space. Uh, this is why the Ladigo Idaga style and Tibetan wave style use a shorter whip to begin with. That being said, it's not the only weapon that gets caught on the environment. You wouldn't be able to use a spear and swing it around in the same way underneath the tree. You wouldn't be able to swing a sword around in a cramped cave, as you were just mentioning. See, that's the that's the going to be the, one of the All biggest right. issues with combat. Now, there always is the problem if the opponent gets a hold of the end of the whip it no longer is able to be used as um, you might expect. That isn't a flaw only on the whip's part. If an opponent is able to get a hold of the point of the sword, you lose the leverage and you lose the ability to use the sword as you might expect. If an axe gets buried in a shield and you can't get it loose, you lose the ability to use that axe as effectively. What about kung fu kind of style combat where you're actually using it more as a rope instead of a whip. Need to be a, a bog me on the head. This is another weapon of yeah, sorts. Yeah. Anthony Delange's here describes how the whip is not just a whip, but it is a multitude of flexible weapons in one. It can be used as a loop and envelopment tool. The whip can be used as a baton and envelopment tool. It can be used as a nunchuck, as a rope dart, as a flail, and continues to display that it is an excellent grappling tool. All right, ready? Three, yep. two, one. <laughs> oh, 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 boy! I find it interesting that you started to intuitively do what many of the masters teach, where you use the whip not just to crack, but then use the rest of the whip as a, a secondary grappling tool. I think where it could really shine is in dual wielding as a complementary weapon. The whip can effectively be paired with a knife. The Ladigo Idaga style, as taught by Tom Meadows, pairs a straight bladed knife with a short whip. The Tibetan wave uses a karambit and a short whip. These specific styles make use of a whip that is about four to six feet long, where other styles may use a whip that is closer to 15 feet. Using a longer whip would give you exceptional reach, and not just reach, but very, very controlled reach. There are not many weapons that have a reach that long to begin with, much less one that can be controlled so precisely. But even so, like, yeah, you're all armored up, but this isn't like crazy armor. This is, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, a couple of jumpers, well, that, you know. Yeah. Armor's hard to beat by about anything. That's why armor was so effective. Two years ago, I had a man come to me when I was performing at a Renaissance fair, wearing a full chainmail shirt, and asked if I would um, attack him so that he could see what level of damage he could expect from a whip. Uh, with his permission, I started out light and then pro got progressively more and more intense in my attacks. And even going full force, he did not suffer any significant damage to the point where he uh, got upset with me, nor would be unwilling to continue fighting if it were a combative situation. I now have a greater capacity to do damage with the whip than... I did two years ago, but I still doubt that I could inflict any pain significant enough to, rem to render someone in armor incapacitated. If the attacker is unarmored, however, the capacity for damage dramatically increases. If you weren't wearing armor, oh, ow, like that could would that be enough pain to get you to 
yes. halt and attack. Yes. Once very early in my whip cracking career, I had my father hold a target in his hand and unfortunately on the, the light gentle upswing, I hit him with the, the tip of the whip. It still produced pain enough in him that he dropped the target and to this day still will not hold any target I ask him to hold. A good solid whip cracks to the head? I think that has a good potential of stopping someone in the tracks. I myself, through my years of whip cracking, have hit myself in almost every conceivable place, including uh, across the face and eyes. It was enough to cause me, as the whip user, to drop my whips, clutch my face, and fall to my knees, where I was unable to compose myself for a few minutes. <sighs> Does that mean a master, a master with pinpoint accuracy could always go for it straight away? And, and would that be a winning move? Yes, that is correct analysis. And using it, because it's not only a whip, you could also conceivably use it as rope. Mm -hmm. Please don't use the whip as rope. That will break the whip. You wouldn't use a sword as a pry bar. Please, please don't. My final takeaway is ultimately I don't think it's an effective weapon for two big reasons. First one is the amount of room you need to use it effectively and how yep. it easily gets tangled on certain Absolutely. things. And second is the likelihood of getting tangled on yourself, or if you're hitting yourself, that it's got an unpredictable nature that even masters have a, would have a higher chance of something going wrong. With that having said, it is far more effective than I thought. Like we got a higher level of effect than I was predicting, surprisingly so. Your conclusion it makes two very valid points. As to the point, is the whip an effective weapon? The question itself is flawed. Effective simply means, does it serve its intended purpose? Any object can be an effective weapon if you try hard enough. A more complete question, in my opinion, would be, would this be able to do what I anticipate needing it to do? This question is, of course, two in one. The first, what does the thing do? And two, does that match my expectations? A tool simply has capacities and functions. It isn't inherently good or bad. There's an adage that goes something to the effect of, when all you have is a hammer, every problem starts to look like a nail. A hammer is good at hitting things, especially nails. A hammer doesn't turn screws very well. A hammer doesn't cut wood very well. A hammer doesn't sweep dirt very well. There are tools that do all of those jobs in a far superior way than a hammer. And likewise, any of those other tools would make a poor hammer. Applying that to the realm of weapons, a whip does not function like an ax. Its ability to cut wood is negligible, and that's not what it was designed for. If you want to cut off limbs, use a sword or use an axe. They will be far more effective than the whip will be. If you want a weapon that is versatile and able to be used at a variety of different ranges, you might consider the whip. Today was the first day that I've ever used a whip in my entire life. You did remarkably well for having had no uh, previous experience with the whip. The whip has so much crossover or so much potential crossover with sword use that potentially gave you a leg up. So my first thought, and one of my most important takeaways is, if you just spend a little time, you can get very proficient at this sort of weapon. Very short yeah. to get to a good point. Not to become an expert, I think you but can to get to a good point. Yes, that is correct analysis. If you've enjoyed talking about the whip, please consider looking at the other videos that I have linked in the description. Check out Adam Winrich's channel. Check out the Whip Cracking 101, the monthly challenge group on Facebook and consider attending Combat Con 2023 in Las Vegas. Combat Con features experts from all around the world, from disciplines ranging from HEMA to martial arts to uh, swords and weapons and, and on and on. It is a great place to learn from the best. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next adventure. I don't know, I wanna go play with a whip more. I can...